Venice Reconstituted went up in 1989, and it was a replacement for Venice Reconstituted from the uh, pavilion. And uh, the idea when I put that mural up is I knew it was going to be in a graffiti prone area. So I uh, decided from the beginning that when I came back to do cleanups on the mural, which was all splatter painted on the lower part, so it was really easy to clean up graffiti, uh, that I would add new characters to the top. And that way it would be a historical record and a parody not only of the Venice on the half shell, but the Botticelli. Uh, but it would be constantly updated by adding new things uh, that were the fashion of the time when I came through and did the most recent update and that went on for about 15 years worked great uh, and then about five years ago the uh, graffiti walls which are the remnants of the pavilion are written into the charters that they can be legally painted with graffiti all of which is a wonderful program and I think it's a, a real vivid part of the culture today so I'm for the walls, but the downfall of the walls is uh, everything within the immediate path going to and from the walls suffered a lot of graffiti, uh, including uh, my mural, and the bottom area just got completely eaten up with graffiti and it was more or less uh, destroyed, which was too bad. The good side of it was it allowed me the opportunity to repaint the whole mural higher up on the wall so it at least makes it more difficult for a graffiti artists to get to. Being a muralist, you know the mural's only gonna last 20 years if you're lucky. So when I put the murals up, I did it with a mindset thinking that they would last 10, 15 years and they would have a life. They would be relevant to the community for that period. And after that, they would sort of lose their relevance. They would be old and it'd be time for them to come down and a new mural go up. But as it worked out, quite the opposite happened. Uh, every year they're up, they become more important to the community. Venice Beach, the mural behind me here where I'm graffitiing uh, the word Venice on the side of the wall, back when that was put up in 1990, that's actually what graffiti looked like. When you see the new stuff that's going on today at the graffiti walls, uh, makes that stuff that I put up in 1990 look very primitive. The stuff's happening today is very sophisticated work. Stuff only stays up for a few days before the next one is put up. I always uh, make a point to walk through and see what's going on. The Venice Beach course line, I really look for opportunities to uh, put different styles and looks up on the wall. Uh, at home in the studio, I do a lot wilder looking stuff. The uh, Venice Beach Coral Slime is very similar to the stuff I do at home. Morrison Mural started out uh, to be one of a series of standing portraits of famous people placed around Venice. After doing the Jim Morrison, I uh, ran out of walls there for a while for uh, putting up these vertical uh, figures. I did one of a Venice cop, but it got so badly graffitied it only lasted about six months. Did uh, Abbot Kinney, which is a five-story standing figure over on North Venice. And I'm still looking to do a Janis Joplin or a couple of others, but right now I'm happy where that's at. So a funny thing happened when I was uh, cleaning up the mural about two weeks ago. The mural itself actually held up remarkably well considering it's been there for 20 years. Uh, but while I was there, I had two different people come up and ask me if this uh, story was true. And it's apparently a legend that's developing around the mural. And the story goes that uh, Jim Morrison's uh, girlfriend, when Jim Morrison died in Paris, gave the coroner dog bones rather than Jim Morrison's bones and brought his uh, remains home and buried them directly under where the microphone in the mural is aiming. Now, of course, that can't possibly be true. I'm not really a slave to any particular style or look. Stuff that's in galleries, once you're in the gallery, 
you're in a way obligated to do work that's very much in the style that you've already started. Uh, so you're developing a particular look because you have a clientele that's buying that art. Well, when you're doing public art, you're not limited that way. Uh, the work I do varies according to the uh, site itself. Uh, I, uh, I go into a project looking for something iconic that will represent the community in the future without doing something that's too cliche, too historical vignette. Uh, and I managed to find a lot of things that kind of fit the bill. Uh, and I'm looking for different styles and looks, particularly in Venice where I have a lot of walls near each other and I don't really want to have the same look on every wall, so I change it up. America used to be a very leading edge place, very fad conscious, even at a pop cultural level. So just as soon as whatever the most recent fad was went by, then it was just, you know, to say it was history is to give it too much credit. They just keep right on going to whatever the next fad is. Well, somewhere in the last 15 years, I think there's been a change, not just in Venice, but everywhere, where now uh, people attach themselves to fads or what's going on according to their age and their development. And then that group of interests no longer falls by the wayside like it used to. Now you'll get uh, uh, a bunch of different music styles all bidding for the uh, listener and the audience. Uh, so where you used to have one main uh, music form and everything else was very peripheral, now you have six or eight different primary music forms and they're all bidding for their uh, audience. Art kind of has the same, same thing. Used to leading edge art uh, became history and artists quit doing that style very quickly as the next stylistic innovation came along. Well, somewhere in the beginning of the 70s, they realized that you're going to run out of stylistic options and uh, there was a lot of theory going on that, you know, art was going to, that was going to be the end of art. My wife and I, we, uh, our lifestyle is such that we live at a place and do something for four or five years and then get uh, to say we get bored with it it's a bit strong but we're we're ready to move on and do something else and uh, you know every five years well I'm ready to move back to Venice and put up some more murals and then we'll go off and uh, do something else like we've uh, spent five years in Europe we've spent uh, time in the Bay Area uh, we spent time in Florida now, uh, the last time we left uh, uh, Venice, we moved up to the very north end of the state and opened up a horse ranch. And uh, I've had 13 foals born on the ranch, which frankly was a lot of fun. And they're now been raised and, uh, and most of them sold. We're down to 10 horses now and are probably moving out of the business and ready to move on to something else. But, now we have a bunch of 1,200 pound pets, so we're not going to be in any hurry. It took four months to do this thing. Boy, am I glad it's done. Started off last fall, now it's springtime. Shouldn't take that long to do a piece of art. It's 4,000 square feet, 100 feet long, 40 feet high. It's not really the scale of it, it's how many little detailed items are in it. Each shoe took a day. 
there's like, you know, probably 30, 40 people, they, or items, actually there's probably 100 items in there. Each one took a day, sometimes two. It just all added up. You come to a site with a drawing, a plan, an idea, but the reality of it is, uh, when you look at that drawing, you know, you're three feet in front of it and you kind of look at it, it's all front and center. But when you come to a site, each site is different. Uh, this one, uh, you could see it up close and personal, kind of from underneath looking up uh, in the alley, or you could look at it uh, from across the uh, boardwalk uh, where you basically see the upper half. So as a result, the uh, drawing that I started with really wasn't relevant. Design for the location. 